Welcome back to Inside City Hall. As we reported earlier, there's a vacuum of representation this year in Brooklyn that has not been seen in decades, presenting an opportunity for plenty of fresh faces to represent the borough in Albany come January. There are currently four vacant assembly districts, one vacant Senate seat, plus two assembly members in the borough who are not running for re-election, creating two more vacancies. Joining us to take a deep dive into this unusual situation in Brooklyn, we've got Democratic consultants Taquana Henderson-Parsons making her first appearance on the show. Very good to see you. Thank you. Also, George Arts, an old familiar to the show, and uh, New York Daily News Brooklyn reporter Ruven Blau. Thank you all for being here. Good to see everybody. Great to be here. Um, Ruven, how did we how did we get to this point? Is, is it is it simply coincidence, or is this part of some fundamental change in Brooklyn? Uh, a little bit of both. There's a mix uh, between a bunch of candidates who uh, switched around from the assembly uh, into this into uh, the city council, and uh, some of the some of the seats are open up over due to corruption, as the Boylan seat open up over corruption mm -hmm. uh, in March. So it's just kind of a, a bit of a mix of both, and, and aging out as well. When you have uh, Rhoda Jacobs and Joan Millman, uh, who have been longtime uh, state lawmakers in mm -hmm. Brooklyn, who have uh, decided to step away. Okay, it's um it's a big complicated situation. Let, let's just dive right in. Let's start with the uh, the 20th Senatorial District. Eric Adams used to represent this area. This is a, a highly gerrymandered district, only a politician could love. Way over on the east, you've got Brownsville. It sweeps through uh, Crown Heights, up and around, hops over Eastern Parkway, comes all the way down to Sunset Park somehow. Um, we've got who running in that race, Daquana? We have Rubain Durancey. We have a uh, district leader, Jesse Hamilton, and a third candidate, uh, Demetrius Lawrence. Uh-huh. Un unclear what, how, how well that's going to shape up. Um, it's safe to say that Jesse Hamilton is the favorite. I've even seen some reporting on this that he's apparently, the, the Senate office somehow is open, and he's sort of giving out business cards saying that he's already working in the office, which, you know, I, I don't know what the, the legalities are, but it's going to get a lot of attention, I'm sure, in this race. I think it's a little early for him to be counting his chickens. Yeah. Well, Ruben Durancey has raised an incredible amount of money. I hear there's some institutional support maybe going his way, including some unions, possibly the Working Families Party. Mm. But he is a very intelligent candidate, very impressive, has done a tremendous amount of fundraising for someone who has not been involved in electoral politics. And, and, and so, George, um, where is the borough president in all of this? Is this an attempt by him to sort of um, play kingmaker, at least in his own former district? Well, this is a surrogate race for the two powers in the area. Mm -hmm. Hakeem Jeffries has Durancey. And and Eric has uh, Jesse. has Jesse and Je you know and Jesse has been around for a long time as a leader. He's well respected among the among the leaders. He has a lot of support. Mm -hmm. Let, let's jump over to uh, to Mill Basin in uh, District 59. This was the seat that was held by Alan Mazel, who's now a city council member. He's leaving, and there's a the, there's an interesting uh, sort of thing going on here. It's got a lot of Canarsie. It's got a lot of Mill Basin. Um, I think of this as Gerritsen Beach. Gerritsen Beach is sort of a sort of a white ethnic area, but that's not necessarily the case. And the two candidates that are running um, reflect perhaps an ethnic shift in this area. We've got uh, Mercedes Narcisse, who I've heard from very, very often, <laughs> frequent candidate, politically very active, and um, Roxanne Persaud. How, how does how's that working out? I I think this is the. Uh, this tells you that this had, uh, this district has uh, really changed. Mm -hmm. Alan Mazel, uh, white Jewish uh, candidate, who went to the council, um, and and so Roxanne is Guyanese, I believe, mm -hmm. um, and and so uh, she's considered the favorite out of the TJ Club. She's very close to the leadership in Brooklyn. And uh, she'll be very strong. I mean, is it right? You say TJ, the Thomas, the mighty uh, Thomas sorry. Jefferson Democratic Organization, uh, where the uh, the current chairman of the party is really based. Frank right? Stadio. I mean, so yeah, Frank Stadio. This is this is home base for them. Uh, this is a seat that um, they really are going to fight hard to keep. I think. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, lo let's look at um, the the Joan Millman seat, uh, and, and we shouldn't really refer to him that way. But uh, the, the 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 assembly uh, vacancy that's going to be created uh, when Joan Mil when Joan Millman leaves. Very heavy reform district, but I imagine there'll be a lot of candidates running there as well. Yeah, it appears so. She's been uh, there for 17 years, so it's just kind of a, a real sort of new opening. Uh, right, at, right after she announced, she's uh, taking a job with uh, the city department of 
for the aging. And right after she announced that she's leaving, uh, Joanne Simon uh, mm -hmm. threw her, tossed her hat into the ring. And she seems to be uh, somebody who's been around for a long time, who's been really active in the community and seems to be a you know early front runner. Is she, is she um, a district leader currently? Yeah, I believe so. Joanne Simon, she, yeah. she's, yes. been, she's been very active out there for a long time. But I imagine there'll be some others as well. But um, also, very mm -hmm. interesting, she was a candidate for city council against Steve, um, Levin. Against Steve Levin. And she did very well in the 52nd Assembly District, which is a large portion. Is there, there's a fair amount of overlap there? Mm -hmm. So she'll. Uh, okay, so she'll. She has good she reform walks in the door. credentials. Mm -hmm. She walks in the door with about 1,800 votes coming out of the 52nd. One thing about Bro Brooklyn reformers I know is that they, they always find something to have a blood fight about, right? So she's probably not pure enough on some obscure issue uh, on a, a land use fight that was resolved 10 years ago. Um, l l let's talk a little bit about the 55th. This is where uh, Junior Boylan, um, now on his way to prison, uh, is um, what, leaving a vacancy, and there's been a Boyland representing that area since the 1970s. So we've got a big literal vacuum here and a big free-for-all, right? Absolutely. The Boylands have been in charge pretty much since 1978. I was one. Uh, <laughs> you were one years old? Okay. I was one years old. Uh -huh. this, this will be the first time that a Boylan hasn't represented that area. Mm -hmm. You'll see some perennial faces like Tony Herbert, the Anthony Joneses of the world, and you'll see some new faces, Latrice Walker, who's run for district leader, who's affiliated with Congressmember Clark mm -hmm. and Lori Bouger, who's been very impressive out the gate with fundraising, with putting an organization together, and also with her enormous union endorsements. She's already landed Big Purple. Uh, now, the, the council and member it, out there is Darlene Mealy, and she has a candidate, it, right? It, yeah, Anisha uh, Williford, uh -huh. and she's supporting her. So right. you can't rule her out. And, right. But everyone says that Boozer at this moment is the front runner. Okay. So now, Ruben, as, as you try and cover this, as we try and cover this, as we try and sort of get our arms around this, what are, what are sort of the major themes that emerge for you? I mean, what what what's going on in Brooklyn? I mean, you know, we, we we've got a mayor out of Brooklyn, and that in itself is sort of a big deal. But there's sort of a more nuanced story developing uh, borough wide, right? I think what's what's most fascinating to me is uh, like the Rhoda Jacobs seat, which is an area she's held since 1978, and you know, the demographic has just drastically changed. Uh, you know, when she came in office, it was uh, mostly white uh, residents, and now it's 60% uh, African American. So, you know, you're going to see candidates, uh, uh, Haitian candidates, uh, look to really kind of grab hold of that seat. And it's, you know, an area that's just really, really changed over the years. Yeah, that's very interesting. In fact, let's take a look at that, the 42nd District. Uh, and, and right, for 36 years, basically every two years, Rhoda Jacobs, um, a, you know, Jewish middle aged woman, would run for re election in a very heavily Caribbean district, nine Caribbean candidates would all announce, she would beat them all, and then two years would go by and the whole thing would play itself out all over again. Um, this time you've got no road to Jacobs, what happens now? I think this is a very interesting dynamic going on in that district. You have Rodney's Bichette, who's the Haitian candidate, who has also won the support of the public advocate and the mayor, who did very well in those districts in the primary. And you have Ricky Tulak, who has uh, garnered the support of Rhoda Jacobs. So it'd be very interesting uh -huh. to see the the play out, the result of the incumbent being able to transfer her support versus the new progressive movement. Uh -huh. Rodney, Rodney's Bichat has a lot of support. Uh, mm -hmm. String, Eric Adams, others. Okay, very interesting. Um, I, I don't want to leave out some of the, the more obvious ones, but in District 60, where uh, the Barons are uh, doing sort of a switch, right? Inez Barron was the assembly member. Now she's in the council. Her husband, former council member uh, uh, Charles Barron, intends to run for that very same seat. Um, are there any other candidates in that race? Chris Banks. Aha. Uh -huh. Chris Banks, who has run against the Barons before. Correct. Right? Um, that's not just a protest vote, is it? I don't think so. I think that he has developed a little bit of a base in addition to somewhat of a protest vote, but I'm not quite sure he's he's ready yet. I think Kim Council is running again too, right? Kim Council is running in the 54th against uh, Eric DeLon and... Uh, uh -huh, the adjacent district. Mm -hmm. District 54 is, um, right, had been represented by Espinal, who is now in the city yeah. council. Mm -hmm. It's now vacant. Uh, is there organization interest in that? Does the, the party have a, a favorite in that one? I believe the party will be backing Eric DeLon. Uh-huh, very interesting. I would expect that. Okay. Um, the, the new power brokers in Brooklyn um, may end up including uh, uh, Eric Adams, always includes the, the, uh, the, the members of Congress. Any other institutional forces we should be aware of? 
I think uh, you have to always, you know, don't discount the unions, um, mm -hmm. especially in the uh, in the race um, uh, for Jesse, Jesse Hamilton. You know, mm -hmm. he's a guy. He's uh, you know worked DC thirty seven member, Department of Finance, uh, and you know they've they've been rooting for him for a while mm -hmm. uh, to take that seat. Okay, we'll we're gonna um, sort all of this out as we get closer to primary day, where I think probably much of this is gonna get settled. These are all very heavily Democratic districts, but thank you all so much for uh, helping to straighten that out for us. Thank you. thank you. We're going to take a short break now. Coming up, I'll ask four top political reporters what they make of the new warm public relationship between Governor Cuomo and Mayor de Blasio. We're back in a minute. <laughs>